Last night I was at a party. It was a party where somebody was showing us all about these cleaning things where you don't have to use any chemicals. And it was really amazing, I have to say. And while we were there, we, I was, um, I met with like five women I really don't know very well. And it was great. And I was also at my best friend's house. And I realized I had this epiphany while I was there. I want to share it with you because I think it can help greatly. I realized that no matter where I go, men and women talk about the things that they want. They, th they talk about the things they don't have. They talk about the things that they're striving for. They make plans. They take action. Sometimes they're in inaction. There's a lot that happens when we want something. And it doesn't matter what it is we want. Being at this party, I was listening to the conversations around me. I was partaking in the conversations too. There was some talk about business, a little bit. Uh, there was some talk about homes. Like my best friend just bought a beautiful new home. It's very large and it, there's a lot to take care of. And it's stunning in terms of like how it feels. It's very comfortable. It's, it's warm. It's inviting. And it, it's a lot of freaking work, actually. Uh, we were talking about bodies. We were talking about what we eat. We were talking about how, clean, how we clean our homes and um, whether we clean our homes and how we hire people to do certain things for us. There was a lot of conversation, the kind of conversation that happens when you're sitting around just shooting the shit with somebody. And I realized that it doesn't matter what the topic is. Every human wants something. And what we tend to do to ourselves is we tend to compare. And I'm going to talk specifically about my friend Leslie's house. Leslie has this beautiful new house. She's my best friend. We have been friends for probably 12 years, I think. And we are deep, deep close friends. And her home is stunning, but it is not a home that I could live in because it requires a lot of love and attention. I live in a big house, but it's an old house and it's 118 years old or something and it requires minimal attention. And when we have to take care of something, we have to hire somebody for it because we suck at that stuff. <laughs> and when Leslie first moved into her home, I really did that compare and despair thing where I was like, oh, this is so warm and this is so beautiful and it's so new and she's done everything to it. and. Uh, my son also got a little jammed up about it. He was like, why can't we have a house with a pool? Why can't we have a house with a lot of land? And I kind of had to write myself and say, well, what do I want? Why would I want that? I know why Leslie wants that. She loves a big home. She loves to have a lot of land. She loves to take care of that stuff. Um, she loves to host. I don't like to host. I don't like to entertain. And so I really had to get straight with myself about what do I want in my life in terms of the home I have? Then in the conversation last night, I could see the women there. They're looking around this home and commenting on how beautiful it was and how well maintained it was and how warm it was and how in three months after moving there, she has everything unpacked. And they were doing a little bit of the compare and despair with them, themselves. Like, oh, I've been in my house six years and I've been in my house three years and it's still not unpacked. And there's that compare and despair thing that we tend to do. And sometimes we do it with self-deprecation. But sometimes there's something underneath it. And then, of course, because we're with women, the talk turns to food and what are people eating and what are people not allowed to eat and what are people allowing themselves to eat and what are they allowing themselves to drink? And there's a lot of like the comparing, like what worked for her, what doesn't work for me? And I just I watched these women with different body types, different heights, different you know, different ways of being in the world. And all of them had something negative to say about themselves and the way they are in the world. And believe me, I was managing my mindset a lot during this, these conversations. And it reminded me of um, how this is true for women who want to start a business also. So what we see when we start want to start a business is everybody else's bigger, shinier business, their business that has been in uh, business for, you know, many years, and they're, they're making a lot of money. And it's easy for them and they're used to it and they're good at marketing. All of that stuff that we tell ourselves that is not true for us, right? So we compare and then we feel the despair. And I really believe this is one of the worst things that we can do for ourselves. And I wanted to get on here today and talk about this lesson because being in that home yesterday, watching the women interact, listening to the presentation, I realized there's a lot of chatter that we have and it doesn't matter how good somebody else's life seems. They have their own nonsense and shenanigans and garbage and junk that they are carrying around with them. 
And if you are somebody who's trying to grow a business or launch a business, and you're looking around saying other people have it easier, other people are able to do this more quickly, uh, I'm doing something wrong, there's something wrong with me because I don't want this kind of business and I do want that kind of business. If that's the chatter in your head, I will tell you the entire journey will be absolutely terrible for you. There's nothing that will rattle your cage more than starting your own business. Hi, Margie. Starting your own business, growing your business, it is a really uh, mind-numbingly, um, you have got to go into your mind and make sure that you're clean up in there and that you're not comparing your business to everybody else's business. So what I, where I finally got to at the party last night was I, I kind of settled in my head, like Leslie's home is a beautiful home and I'm so grateful that as her best friend, I get to be there whenever I want. I get to go over and use her pool and I don't have to take care of it. I'm grateful that she wants to do that work and that I get to benefit from it. And then period, just, just put a stop there. I don't have to compare anymore why I don't want that lifestyle, why I don't want a bigger house, why I don't want to move. We have what we need. It works for us and I get to benefit from it with my best friend, period. I can let go of that comparing and despairing mentality. The women around me, they were all, you know, beautiful women, smart women, like lovely women. And each one of them looked really different and they were all beautiful in exactly their own way, period. I am heavier than all of them, period. Like none of it mattered because when they looked at me, they saw something completely different than I saw in myself. And so... How much do you spend comparing and despairing about what other people are doing? Let's bring it to your business. Are you looking around at other people's businesses and saying, well, her business looks so easy. She's got a great, she's got a great business model. And this actually came to my mind last night because this is fascinating. The woman who was teaching us was talking about Norwex. And I don't know if you know what Norwex is, but it's, these, uh, it's a whole system that you can clean without chemicals. She, it, she, she did a magical presentation. I was very impressed with this woman. And she also talked about it being a business opportunity. And she talked about how she doesn't do any marketing. She never does Facebook Lives. She basically has, she just painted a really lovely picture of how her life is and how she runs her business, how she was able to like leave her job. And I literally, me who has a successful business that I love, I am literally listening to this woman going, maybe I should sell Norwex. Maybe I should do a Norwex party. Like what is wrong with me? We're always looking for what's easier, what's better, what somebody else is doing because they must know more than we know. My friends, you know what you need. You always know what you need. You just normally don't calm your brain down enough to listen to what you need. I'm listening to this woman who has a beautiful presentation about becoming a Norwex salesperson and, or rep, and I'm thinking maybe I should just abandon my business and do this. That's crazy talk. I have got to br like bring my brain down to a place where I can be like that is her choice and that is her business. And I'm thrilled for her that it's working for her, but I get to stay in my own lane. Do you stay in your own lane or are you constantly moving from lane to lane, trying to serve all the people and do all the things? And by serving all the people, I, I, I'm even talking about like my family, right? So my son, he looks at his best friend's house and he's now saying, well, why don't we live in a giant house with a pool and a pond and cows next door where I can just wander all the time? And, and if I don't stay in my lane and know what my purpose is, it's very easy to get swayed by my son or my husband. Hi, mom. You have to stay in your lane and stop looking at who's creeping up on you. I don't care whether they are more successful financially. I don't care whether they are thinner than you, if they are blonder than you, if they are whatever than you. Stop looking at who's creeping up on you and stay in your lane because you know in your heart that what you're doing is your purpose. And if you're, a little, if you're struggling with your purpose, that's, that's a whole other conversation we can have. If you're really struggling to know like, who am I? Then those, these, these people creeping up on you and in the lanes next to you, they can feel even noisier. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, if you're worried about the race to six figures, making 10K a month, having 44,000 followers on Instagram, I'm gonna tell you that that is a waste of stuff to worry about. Stay in your lane. 
Know what your purpose is. Know what drives you. Know what your non-negotiables are. For me, it's a non-negotiable to have a gigantic house that I need to take care of. But that's, that's just me. I'm not saying it's wrong for anybody else. I'm saying I know what's right for me. So please stop judging what is right for other people and just know what is right for you. And, and listen to yourself because we don't get quiet enough to listen and know. It's so easy to get pulled from lane to lane. Does this resonate with you? Are you somebody who feels like you're getting pulled in all directions and you're not sure what you're supposed to be focusing on each day? We just talked about this in my group yesterday, my group coaching program. One of my clients who's super active and has a, a, th- a successful business, she's like, I feel like I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing every day. And so I said, go back to basics. Who do you serve? What do they need from you? Do you tell them what, what you have to offer? And she didn't. She wasn't really working at the foundational level. She was getting pulled in a whole bunch of directions. And when we can just stay in our lane and know who we help, then we can be purposeful. So in my lane, these are the things I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on my home and making it as comfortable and warm for myself and my family as possible. I'm focusing on my health and my body and my mental mindset. And I have to wor- not worry about other people's opinions of that and letting that go and letting them have their own opinions and know that I don't have to change their mindset. I just have to stay with my mindset. And in my business, I'm focusing on women who want to grow their businesses, women who are tired of feeling like this all the time, women who are tired of feeling frazzled and confused and lost, women who need support and they need systems and procedures, but they don't know how to get that. Those are my lanes. What are your lanes? What are the lanes you're staying in? I'd love to hear it. And if you know somebody who could use this message, please share away. Because I think that as women, we want to help everybody. We want to please everybody. And we forget that we're the number one person that we have to take care of. So if this message resonates with you, I'd love to have you drop a heart or a hello or just introduce yourself or send me a message because I'm always happy to chat with you. Thanks for stopping in today on my live. I appreciate it. Bye.